Meat Boy is back. Today we are going to make some carnivore meatballs. I figured you guys have a lot of ground beef on hand. You know, most of us are on a budget. You know, we're locked inside. You know, maybe we're no longer working our jobs. So this is going to be a way, you know, to spice up, to add flavor, to add nutrient density to a classic meatball recipe. Depending on your dietary restrictions, if you're keto, if you're carnivore, you know, if you're just on a regular diet and want to add breadcrumbs and perhaps marinara sauce, a bunch of different possibilities. Everything is up for your own interpretation, but the ingredients I'm using today are based on both nutrient density, quality, you know, they're free of agrochemicals, as well as my past culinary expertise. So let's take a look at the ingredients. So most of the ingredients here are what you would see in a typical meatball. You know, we have the ground beef. This is two pounds of 80-20 grass-fed ground beef. We have this on Frankie's free range meat. I have two eggs here. I actually got the organic omega-3 eggs from the supermarket as, you know, I haven't been eating as many eggs lately, so I have not been ordering them from a local farm. Ideally, you get soy-free, corn-free eggs uh, from a local farm. You're going to be paying, you know, six, seven, eight dollars a dozen, but it's definitely worth it. We have Parmesan cheese. And the reason I have it grated in this container is because uh, I went over this girl's place to make carbonara and I had to pick up some stuff at Whole Foods. Uh, but normally I would just use like a chunk of raw Parmesan and I would just grate it over uh, whatever I'm making. Uh, we have some Grana Padano on Frankie's free range meat, which is uh, pretty much the same thing. Of course, we have our salt and pepper. Uh, I'm going to add some fish sauce. That's going to add some more umami, uh, just a bit of savory flavor, some more seasoning to the meatballs. You know, you don't really have to add this. I wouldn't say uh, it's necessary. And of course, we have the Italian seasoning. Now, this is actually all-purpose seasoning, but all-purpose seasoning pretty much has the same ingredients as Italian seasoning. So, you know, get some organic Italian seasoning, organic all-purpose seasoning. Uh, if you don't want to add this, if you're really, really short carnivore, you don't have to, but this is what's going to make the difference. This is going to add that classic, typical flavor. Uh, if you're not as strict on your diet, uh, what I would do is, you know, dice up some organic onions, uh, some garlic, and parsley and put that in here instead of this Italian seasoning. And one thing I like to add that people don't usually add is butter. I'm going to add a couple tablespoons of butter to the actual meatballs just to add that really delicious butter flavor. And sometimes you guys might see people use pork rinds as a breadcrumb substitute, but I honestly think organic breadcrumbs are healthier for you than, you know, high omega-6, you know, pork dust. So, you know, if you really do want to add that to the meatballs, just use the highest quality breadcrumbs you can find, you know, unless you're nuts and you're making your own, you know, pork rinds from pasture-raised pork. There might be one guy on the planet doing that. So we're basically going to combine all this stuff together. I'm going to add the pepper to the eggs. And a lot of pepper because, you know, we're seasoning two pounds of meat. I'm not going to add too much salt. Just a little pinch because this stuff is really salty. So I'm going to do, and maybe, yeah, two tablespoons of the fish sauce. Italian seasoning, I'm actually going to do quite a bit. Eh, that's more like two tablespoons. We'll go with about three tablespoons of Italian seasoning. Just mix it into the eggs. Imagine you giving these eggs to your kids for breakfast. <laughs> Daddy, why is my omelet brown? Uh, if you do decide to add breadcrumbs to your meatballs, uh, you could also do like a cup, a cup and a half of raw milk. Uh, that'd be really tasty and add some even more nutrition to these. So we got the eggs in with the seasoning. Now I'm going to use all of this Parmesan. Normally you'd use about half of a cup. And I think that's just what I have here. Yeah, this is about half a cup of cheese. Maybe even three quarters of a cup. Uh, so you can use Pecorino Romano. Uh, Parmesan I like a little more. The Pecorino Romano is really salty, a little more barnyardy. And this is my little secret, as I said. You get a really high quality butter. This is a French butter. I bought this one because it was on sale. Uh, you know, normally I would use raw butter from a local farm. So we'll do maybe, you know, that's about three tablespoons of butter. You don't want to put too much butter in this because it's just going to render out and melt. And, you know, these might fall apart in the pan if you put too much. But the butter, the butter was out at room temperature, so I can mix it in really easily. You know, you don't want to, you don't really want to melt it because if you melt the butter, you'll separate, you know, the milk proteins from the fats. And if it's cold, it's going to be, you know, hard to incorporate. You know, it would be bomb if you made like tartare meatballs with butter in them. Oh my God. Like, like just take like a ball of meat 
like this, put, put some raw butter inside and bite it. Oh my God, that would taste better than the, than the cooked meatballs. But I'm making these for my sister, so. If you, uh, any of you raw tards watching, there's your raw tard recipe. <laughs> you know I love you guys. It's okay. It's okay to be a raw tard. Now we're just gonna make meatballs, you know, depending on what type of recipe you're doing, we'll dictate the size. I'm gonna do, you know, moderate size stuff. This mix smelled so good, I wanted to try it raw. That's really, really good. Really tasty. You could actually add a bit more salt to that. They're not seasoned enough, but it'll be fine because we can just add more salt later. Uh, so what I did was, you know, just six, you know, moderately sized meatballs. I mean, I guess these are pretty big. And I'm gonna bake these in the oven, uh, mainly because pan searing these, you know, it's a lot more work, it's a pain, a lot more of the fat renders out. And, you know, I can just take the temperature in the oven. So when the internal of these meatballs is about like, 127 128 degrees they're going to be done i get a nice even cook in the oven i don't have a huge greasy mess and then we can just put our sauce our toppings on them afterwards so uh, we're going to throw these in the oven at 350. you could even go a bit higher if you're impatient you know probably 400. temperature doesn't really matter of the oven what you want to do is take the temperature of the meatballs i'll actually show you guys my probe thermometer today i usually i use an instant read thermometer but this is a pretty nifty tool too so uh, here i have uh, Therm Pro. I don't remember how much this was. I think it was twenty or thirty dollars. I don't usually use this myself. I got it for my uh, my family. So I'm going to set a custom temperature, one twenty seven degrees. Put the probe thermometer about halfway in. The meatball is a little harder because it's not like a solid piece of meat. It doesn't really want to stay, but that should be fine. You know, so now all we have to do is wait till the internal temp, which is sixty six right now on the left is at 127 so this will go up and up and up maybe it'll take uh you know 15 20 minutes all right so our timer just hit 127. the meatballs look half melted so since frankie boy was extra lazy today he did not put the meatballs on an oven rack ideally if you do have an oven rack you will avoid the greasy mess and the accumulated moisture on the bottom of the pan but they still look pretty good. Depending on your dietary restrictions, as well as what you have on hand, will dictate what you'd like to top this with. Of course, you know, you could have it plain and you know, that would still be delicious. Here I have some fat that was on the top of the last bone broth I made. And it's very flavorful, it's very tasty. Uh, so I'm gonna top my meatballs with a little bit of this. Uh, you know, you can get some organic tomato sauce from the supermarket, you could put you know a little bit of bone broth on this, any sauce that you'd like. You know, since we took this to 127, this should be a perfect medium rare in the middle. About, yeah, you guys see how the inside is still even a little red. That's even a little bit undercooked, but it looks really good. So let's give these a taste. That's really flaming. Guys, you will not get bored of this. Oh my God. Since we took it to that perfect temperature, doesn't really need breadcrumbs, doesn't need anything to add texture. Make this for your kids, they'll love it. Oh my God. The Italian seasoning, plus the parm, nothing really stands out too much. Very balanced, very complex, very well seasoned. Guys, the raw meat tasted good, but this is way better. <laughs> This is really good. So I hope you guys try this. I'm sure my sister's gonna love these for dinner over the next few days. If you guys would like to support me, just you know, drop a like on the video, leave Frankie Boy a comment down below. There's also a bunch of stuff you can check out in the description, including Frankie's Free Range Meat. Thanks for joining me, guys. Enjoy your Saturday. We're gonna do the live stream later at 2 p.m. Eastern time on Frank Tufano. I'll link that in the description.